Hey everybody! Welcome back, or welcome for the very first time, if you have not seen the series before, to Northern Lion Play Spelunky. I'm gonna name this Northern Lion Play Spelunky Episode 1 Rebirth, because we are restarting the series now that this is available on the PC. So I am playing the PC version of Spelunky. This is, uh... A couple of weeks before release, so I'm not 100% sure when this video is going to go up, but uh, if it isn't out yet, if the game isn't out yet, I should say, uh, Spelunky is coming out for the PC via Steam on August 8th, and uh, there's a couple of new features that I'm going to talk about right off the very top here, uh, but then we're going to dive into the actual game ourselves, because I have a lot of experience with Spelunky. I would not consider myself a Spelunky master, I'm actually pretty bad at it, but in my third run of playing Spelunky on the PC, I beat it. Uh, I didn't get to the special secret area, which I don't want to spoil necessarily for anybody who doesn't understand what's going on, but I did beat the quote-unquote boss, so I am improving a little bit, but that is not the end of the game by any stretch of the imagination. So, new things, this daily challenge is a big one, so basically every 24 hours there's a new randomly generated dungeon, or adventure as they call it, that is exactly the same for absolutely everybody that owns Spelunky via Steam. So, you know, my version's the same, Michael A.L. Fox is the same, and you only get one chance. When you die, it's over, and your leaderboard position is secured. Uh, but you can't retry it over and over. So this is kind of like a one-time super hardcore mode that I really like. But I'm not going to play that, because I already played that today. Uh, there's also, you know, Deathmatch which is uh, kind of adversarial multiplayer. And there's co-op as well, but I should mention, uh, for people, I know this is going to be disappointing to some people, but there is no uh, online play in this mo in this version of the game. It is still local multiplayer only. I know that's going to annoy some people, uh, but still, you know, Spelunky. It's still an amazing game. I I'm very pleased that it is out on Steam, the Xbox Live Arcade version from last year. Uh, and I, I basically consider this game a must-buy. It was definitely one of my favorite games from last year, and I am very excited to be playing it and recording it in a much more convenient kind of style here. You know, it's way more convenient to record on the PC, to stream on the PC, and to uh, upload uh, via the PC rather than messing around with the Xbox. So uh, it's gonna be kind of a weird episode. I'm gonna do like a very quick Spelunky primer for people who are new to the game, uh, because I I'm expecting that uh, this may bring in a, a little bit of a new audience for people that did not uh, pay attention to the Xbox Live Arcade release and thus didn't pay attention uh, to my series uh, of like a hundred episodes or sixty episodes that I did of this oh that was really stupid uh, when it was uh, on the Xbox so basically Spelunky is a platformer with roguelike elements our a, a goal ostensibly is to get through uh, 16 levels which are divided up into four distinct segments so we're on the mines right now uh, and after we beat four levels of the mines, we would move on to the jungle. After we beat four levels of the jungle, we will move on to the ice caves. And beat four levels of the ice caves, move on to the temple, where you will also fight uh, a final boss in the form of Olmec. But I won't spoil that just yet. Uh, now, there are kind of micro goals that, uh, you know, take place in... Sp ah, I really thought we could do that. You know what? Let's waste a rope to make this happen. Uh, there are micro goals in Spelunky as well. Like, for example... Uh, collecting gold to increase your treasure. This will allow you to buy new items, but uh, gold also acts as the primary kind of attribute that determines your leaderboard position. So, uh, you know, if you have 500,000 gold when you finish the game, even if you die earlier than someone who is, uh, you know, if you die earlier than someone who has half as much gold of you, half as much gold as you, you still get the leaderboard position uh, over them. Anyway, the only other thing you really need to know to understand what's going on in these videos uh, is that it's there's permadeath, so when you die, you're done forever, uh, and you have to start back at the very beginning of the game, uh, it, um, except for one mechanic that I'll talk about a little bit later. And by rescuing those dogs, or damsels, or, you know, ladies, or, uh, you know, the dude who looks kind of like PewDiePie, uh, you do get one extra heart up there in the top right. So if, it's not like Contra, where if you get hit once you die, you do have a health bar. Some enemies will kill you in one hit, and some things kill you in one hit. But apart from that, basically, it's just a um, an intense randomly generated or procedurally generated uh, platformer with roguelike elements that is a ton of fun, very punishing, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say endlessly replayable, but it's very, very, very replayable to the point where, you know, you could have 300 or 400 hours in this. Easy. Very easy to lose whole afternoons just playing through the game. Uh, so I, hopefully that is a decent enough primer uh, just to get started here. Now, uh, beyond this, there are a few secrets in Spelunky, and this is where we're going to rejoin the people who actually uh, watch my earlier series, uh, and one of those, oh, that's a live bomb, that sucks, one of those secrets is, um, an area known as the City of Gold, as well as Hell, and now in order to get to those, we're gonna have to get some special items that I'm not gonna bore you, uh, with explaining in mundane detail right now, but suffice to say, my goal for this first floor is to pick up two items, one of those items, or I guess one item, and then another condition, uh, one of those items is going to be something called the Ujat Eye, uh, and another item, oh my god, I'm gonna be 
going through ropes so quickly. Uh, the other item, it's not really an item. It's going to be uh, $50,000. And we need that to buy another item uh, on another secret area later. It's going to be very confusing, but uh, odds are it probably won't end up being practical in this episode. We shall see, though. In the meantime, let's just get started here. So I picked up the Matic. If you have forgotten or are otherwise unaware, the Matic does allow you to chop through rocks. Now previously, for a long time, there was a glitch in the Xbox 360 version of the game uh, where you could abuse the Matic, and if you carried it past the first floor where you got it, it would never break, but they patched that out recently. Uh, so now the Matic will indeed break uh, at kind of a random point. So it's really nice to have the Matic in combination with that Ujad Eye. That allows you to see gems that are kind of hidden in the rocks, but instead, uh, we're just going to kind of spam the shit out of it right off the bat here, and hopefully uh, pick up enough gold. I'd love to have 25, 30,000 by the end of this. You know what? We did pick up uh, more ropes, so I almost don't feel as bad about using some to maybe check out the rest of the level. And the most important thing is definitely exploring as much of the level as possible, because the the only way to get the Ujat Eye uh, is through a very convoluted series of circumstances. Uh, ooh, and there actually is a grandfather spider here, as I like to call them as well. Um, but yes, we're, we're going to have to do some special stuff in order to get uh, the Ujad Eye, including finding a chest and then finding a key to correspond with that chest. And if you forget about it, or you don't find it, uh, then it's gone. So you have to be very concerned about that. Uh, good, 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 good. I, I hope I mentioned this, but the last, I guess, mechanical thing is that every single damsel that you rescue is going to be worth uh, one health for you. So it's not like you can't simply... Uh, oh. And after two minutes, by the way, a ghost will come down and try to ruin your life, which is what is happening right now. So we're just going to get this gold and then leave the level quickly. Uh, I'd say it's gone pretty well so far, but things can turn around pretty quickly. But yes, you only get one health per level unless you, you have a very special item called the Kapala, uh, which we'll talk about if we get it. Or And, you know, there's some other stuff. So we know for a fact that the um, key must be on this level because the chest is on this level. So let's... Nah, it was really bad of me. Um, let's just explore a little bit first. If I burn through all these ropes, I'm not going to be happy. But again, uh, if you think I am a mastermind Spelunky player, prepare for disappointment because I am very much not that. Uh, now, there are uh, shopkeepers as well. You know, we can buy items from them in a lot of circumstances. On this one, we're just going to actually be able to gamble. Hopefully win some more money. Oh my god, give me the climbing gloves. That almost never happens. <laughs> or that's not, the, that's not the climbing gloves. Sorry, that's just the money. I won the jackpot. That's okay. I don't need to, you know, spend too much more time here. Uh, if we won the climbing gloves, I would have been a much happier camper. You know, there's a lot of items in Spelunky. We'll talk about what they do individually. Again, I'm trying to strike a balance between people who have seen the series before, which is probably a, a lot of people, and people who have never se seen the series before, which is, again, probably a lot of people, considering that, uh, you know, this game just came out on the PC. So whether you're new or an experienced viewer, I'm going to try to uh, hook you up here. Now, this is a scary situation because there is a... Uh, live TNT crate down here, but I think just by dropping one bomb right here, it should blow that up, but it shouldn't blow up the key. Yeah, the key is basically uh, unbreakable in this situation. So, this will allow us to get the Ujet Eye. We did use another rope to make it happen, which is not... I. Where's the key? Did I blow up the... Oh, no, it's probably just behind this guy. Yeah, okay, that scared me there. Uh, so, we'll pick this up. We triggered some more arrow traps. The arrow traps are one of those enemies that does... Uh, more damage to you than one health. A lot, most of the enemies, like bats, spiders, etc., etc., only do one damage. Uh, arrow traps, unfortunately, do substantially more than that. Now, your damsels do have health as well. I, I believe each one uh, can survive. I really shouldn't get rid of the matic yet, but I want to make sure I get this health to the end. Um, they can survive two hits, I believe, unless they fall on spikes. And spikes are one of those things uh, that will kill you instantly. So we really have to watch out for those. Many a run has ended uh, from simply being an idiot and falling on spikes when I was in an otherwise good situation. So we're going to come back here and get the Matic. We have everything we need to have in order to have a successful uh, trip to the black market. Except for, I would love to have more bombs and also uh, $50,000, which we're not quite at, but we do have one more floor uh, so we could make it happen. Now I'm just coming up here mostly because uh, there's a lot of gold bars up here and these gold bars are worth a lot of money. So again, I'm taking my time here. I am not a very dedicated and patient Spelunky player, uh, but I do like to spend, you know, two minutes per floor to get as much treasure as is humanly possible uh, in order to secure our chances of going to the black market, which secures our chances of possibly uh, being able to make progress in the game. Wouldn't it be amazing if on this very first episode I managed to get all the way to the City of Gold? Might be a pipe dream, but uh, we are at over 50,000. And, you know, 50,000... Ah, oh, the Matic just broke. Okay, I was well, it serves me right, because I was about to get a little bit full of myself. I was going to say, you know, 50,000 is good, but 
it would be more amazing if we could, uh, you know, get to 75,000, because then we could buy a jetpack or a cape. Items that I will, again, if you're confused, talk about in great detail throughout the series. Now, this is a special kind of characteristic here, or a, a monument. This is an idol, sorry, an altar, and if we sacrifice bodies on the altar, we will get items. Like, for example, if I drop this down here, that gave us the spring shoes, which allows us to jump higher. Um, it's not one of the better items in the game. And, uh, you know, I guess people are divided to a certain extent on whether it's best to sacrifice at, uh, altars or to save damsels to give you some extra health. But it's worth, or, it's worth noting that, uh, you don't always have to sacrifice, uh, damsels. You could also sacrifice enemies if you just get them to walk over it, which is great. Or you can, uh, hit them and then place their, like, unconscious bodies on it. Obviously, snakes die in one hit, so... Uh, we, we couldn't do that with any of those snakes, but if there's like cavemen or scorpions or something like that, you can sacrifice them there. And uh, the god who is called Kali works on a point-based system, I believe. So uh, if you, you know, give her something, she gives you some points. And even if those points are not enough to get you an item, you know, they get you a little way towards it, even if you can't explicitly see. Now, there is another interesting mechanic here, um, and that is this. This is the idol, sorry. So if we pick this up, this will cause a big angry rock to roll out of here, Indiana Jones style. Uh, which will destroy everything in its path. So what I'm doing is just kind of scouting forward and seeing if there are any shopkeepers who will get exceptionally angry if they get run over. And you know what? Maybe with good reason. Let me think about how I want to do this. Uh, I, if I, I'm going to have to use my last rope, unfortunately. So I'm not pleased about this. But if we just toss this rope up here, uh, grab this, and then run up. This is going to give us an extra 5,000 gold, I believe, which is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, if we manage to take the idol to the exit, that is. Or if we take it to a shopkeeper, we'll get 5,000 gold. Nothing to sneeze at. So let's uh, fall down. There is fall damage in the game, uh, which is why you always want to plan ahead. And if we still had the Matic, there's a lot of gems to be uh, gotten here. But sadly, uh, not in our current position because we don't have a pickaxe with which to break them. But 58,000 gold. Uh, let's get the F out of here. Hopefully the ghost comes in from the right side of the screen. And he does. I think he comes from whatever side of the screen uh, is closest. So that's going to give us an extra 5,000 gold. We're at 63,000. Now the fun starts. So uh, this guy's going to ask for $10,000 to replace it. I hate to do it, but we'll do it uh, just to open up this shortcut. You can open up shortcuts via this tunnel, man. Uh, and if you open, if you give him kind of three conditions, then he'll open up a shortcut so you don't have to start at the mine every time. Uh, you can instead start at the jungle, which is actually kind of a disadvantage uh, if you're going for uh, what I'm going for right now, which is getting to a special area called Hell and the City of Gold. Um, which, by the way, don't feel like you're getting a bastardized look at uh, the game right now because you do have to beat the final boss to get there anyway, uh, like on exactly the same run. Uh, let me think about this for a second. So what we have to do now, we have to find the City of Gold. Or sorry, we have to find the Black Market, which will allow us to buy an item called the Ankh, which will allow us to kind of open up a secret passage a little later. Um, we want to really watch out for these. I mean, mostly the Bat, but also the uh, Boomerang Man is an asshole. So what we're looking for is that Ujet Eye, which you can see beside my money. Uh, if that starts blinking... Oh, oh, it actually killed the Piranha there, thankfully. Um, if that starts blinking, we will have the opportunity to uh, kind of look for a secret area. Uh, it might not be on this level, it might be on the next level, it might be on the level after that. It changes every single time. Uh, this is actually a really easy idol to get, but uh, I'm mostly concerned about keeping the boomerang with me just to make sure uh, I have a way to kill enemies. This guy actually doesn't need to die, but... Uh, is this the end? It is the end of this floor, so I'm just gonna go back and get the idol. Believe it or not, you know, you might think I'm playing Spelunky. I mean, if you're new anyway, you might think I'm a really good Spelunky player. This is not the case at all. I'm actually fantastically bad at this game, which is what, uh, from my estimation at least, is what makes the series so entertaining to watch sometimes, but... Uh, these orange frogs will explode if they are touched, so we have to... They have a timer on them, which is great, but we have to get away from them. Uh, and these Tiki Traps are one of those enemies that does do more damage than usual. I believe those do four damage each, which is really bad. So we did not see any blinking uh, from our Ujad Eye. You can also hear it. There's like an audio cue. That means one of two things. Either the Black Market entrance is not on this floor, or uh, it is, but I didn't go to the kind of... I didn't explore enough to kind of get it to ping at us at all. But that's okay. I don't think it's on this floor. So, so far, so good. We're up to, like, 75,000 gold. I believe my high score right now is at 150,000. Uh, but, you know, I'm not really worried too much about my leaderboard position. Oh, that was really bad damage. I'm not worried too much about my leaderboard position. I'm more worried about just, you know, making progress in the game. Because uh, getting to hell... I, I got to hell once the entire series that I, I ran before. So, 
Uh, if I can actually make that happen here, I would be a much happier camper. So let's break open this pot. There is nothing inside of that. Not that I necessarily need any more uh, items right now. Or sorry, not that I necessarily need any more gold. What I do lack right now is items. Uh, I am sorely lacking the items department. Let's put this down here. Kali accepts our sacrifice. She's happy with us. I'd prefer if she was happy enough to give us some items, but uh, she might be missing a few points to make that happen. There, I sacrificed two, so we might be a little bit closer to getting an item there. Hopefully we manage to uh, find some more dudes who are easy enough to knock unconscious to bring up there, but I don't have any ropes. Normally, uh, I actually would have... Oh, I'm an idiot. I am such an idiot. Now, this is a Spelunky trademark. I could quite easily just get comboed into Oblivion here. Uh, you see, I lost like four or five health right away. Um, yes, that was very, very bad play on my part. And again, with no ropes, I lack the mobility to get back up there and get my boomerang back. So that's how quickly things can turn wrong. But I'm gonna bank on the fact that it doesn't appear like... Oh, it didn't work. It doesn't appear like the black market entrance was on this one, too. If it is, and we miss it, that's fine. We'll just continue playing through the ice caves and try to beat Olmec and, you know, show you the vanilla way through the game as well. But I have so much gold, it would be kind of a shame. So, again, we're just going to look out for some blinking here, which I should be a little bit more conscience, conscious about. Uh, come over this way. And now, there's a lot of enemies that can kill us in one hit, unfortunately. Uh, some of those enemies also exist on this level. The idols on... Uh, the jungle, I actually think, are substantially easier to kill, or to, to get, I should say, than the idols on uh, the mines, which actually require you to like pay attention to where shopkeepers are. The only thing you need for the uh, idols on uh, the jungle is to make sure that you know you don't fall into the water and die. Uh, so there is an exploding frog down here, and I worry that he's gonna yeah do exactly that, but he should blow up this tiki trap and make my life a little easier. Uh, we also got a journal entry added. I believe uh, journal entries get added for each enemy as you kill them. So that's the exit there. But I do want to explore more to the left here just in case. Again, I hear some blinking. That would be nice. Uh, there is an opportunity to buy some hired help from that shopkeep shopkeeper. I haven't really had good shopkeepers over the course of the game so far. Over the course of this run so far, I should say. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about this one here. So we're just going to run away. Uh, I hope that the black market entrance will be on the next level. It may be, it may not be, we'll, we'll find out pretty soon. Uh, what we have here is a special level called the Dead or Restless. Uh, and, you know, there's a few different kinds of special levels in the game. Uh, the one where we got the Matic on the last one actually was as well. Uh, and what this means is that we'll be able to get a shotgun on this level if we look for a grave marked Ash, which I believe is an Evil Dead reference. But first things first, let's check out over here. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't actually know what this skull does. I believe it gives you a lot of gold, but it also sends the ghost immediately chasing after you. So there's some more ropes, there's some more ropes, and we'll just jump on this lady to get the ruby. Now if we kill that um, Dracula dude down here, and that's a, a nightmare area that I don't want to deal with, but if we kill Dracula man, uh, we will get a cape, which is one of the better items in the game uh, for sure. No question about it, one of my favorites at least. Uh, there is a, some degree of personal preference when it comes to items, but most people seem to agree that one item, uh, either the cape or the jetpack, uh, oh god, is exceptionally useful. So I think I might have just- Oh my god, I killed myself in the worst way possible! Okay, for those of you who need an instant replay there, I threw- I tried to jump over to get to that ash grave, which would have had the shotgun, uh, but sadly I failed it, uh, and I dropped a bomb and a rope simultaneously. I only took one damage, but then the bomb blew up the rock, and the shotgun from the ash grave fell on top of my head and killed me. Again, Rube Goldberg-style dom dominoes falling into place, uh, you know, disaster that basically makes Spelunky... Uh, one of the more entertaining games to both watch and stream. Uh, since this is the first episode of the series, I'm going to stop it here. This is kind of more of an announcement video to be like, hey, I'm playing Spelunky again, or hey, I'm playing Spelunky and you should watch it. So as always, whenever I start a new series, I, appreci I appreciate any support you guys can give it, uh, however you see fit. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow probably with the next Spelunky episode. And the first of many, this is a game that I'm planning on playing prodigiously now that I have my hands on it again. So as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and I will... See you next time.